Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome as we are gathering for worship at Haygood today. My name is Beth Givens. I'm the pastor here at Haygood. I want to welcome all of you to worship today and say a special word of welcome. If you are here for the first time, uh, we have uh, a Connect card over by the... Okay, y'all moved it. Okay, it is by the sanitation station. Thank you, Mike. Um, that Connect card has a couple QR codes on the back of it, and if you scan uh, the top one with your phone, it'll take you to our Connect form where you can leave contact information or submit a prayer request or tell us if you'd like to get involved. And so uh, that's not just for newcomers, but um, anybody um, who would like to um, let us know something. Um, we also um, have uh, a QR code on the bottom of that that takes you to our e-giving site. I want to thank you for remembering COVID protocols, um, which reminds me that I don't have my face shield on. Um, um, I want to thank you for remembering COVID protocols, and the primary one of those is um, if you test positive after you've been at an in-person event here at Haygood, please let me know um, so that we can do contact tracing. We keep that information confidential, but we do need to do the contact tracing. Um, if you don't do QR codes and phones, but you'd like to connect, there are some larger connect cards out in the lobby where you can write down your name and contact information. Um, the season of Advent begins next Sunday. How is it already Thanksgiving? Amen. Um, our worship focus for Advent is called The Inn, Housing the Holy. And we're going to be looking during the season of Advent um, how, at how we can make room in our hearts and in our church for Christ. Look for information this week in your weekly email. If you don't get that, you can sign up on our uh, Connect card. Um, also in worship about how you can grow and serve um, in this series. Also, we will be releasing our details this week about our Christmas Eve worship services as well. We want to remind you at this service that we have a community prayer board over here to my right. You can leave your joys and your concerns on a post-it note, and I will um, remember them in prayer. And this morning, we also have some prayer beads and information about prayer beads in the back of the worship space. Audrey is, Audrey is um, being Vanna White for you back there. Thank you, Audrey. Um, there's also a prayer quilt in the very back of the room, um, and we invite you to go over and or go back and tie a knot in that quilt for Chris. Chris is a 15-year-old who is battling cancer. So say a prayer for him as you tie a knot in the prayer quilt back there. As we move into our time of worship, we are concluding a worship series this morning called Live Like Jesus. Today is Reign of Christ Sunday, the final Sunday in the Christian year, and we focus in worship today on what it means to be obedient to the King. As we move into our time of worship, I invite you to just take a couple of deep breaths and as you breathe out, let go of all the to-do lists, the Thanksgiving shopping, the things that you're worried about. And as you breathe in, inhale the Holy Spirit. As you inhale and as you exhale, ground yourself in the God who is waiting for our worship. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, on earth in heaven above. Your people and all those confessing your name, sharing the blessings of your grace. Your victory, which conquers the fear of death, demonstrating the power of love. Your peace, which flows like a stream in our hearts. That could be greater. What could be greater than this? Sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? Does he see me in my trouble? Does he understand? Sometimes I question if he's able. Can he rescue? Can he save me again and again? When I look back, did he move every mountain? Did he part every
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor and the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good good oh.
when the night is holding on to me god is holding on when the night is holding on to me god is holding on you may be seated we now invite the children to come forward to hear a message from Miss Lori. Good morning, good morning. You coming up, Alex? Come on up here with me, buddy. Come on, sweetie. Let's. You want to come sit up here with me? Come on. There we go. You can come sit on here. You want to come sit up here too? Oh, thank you. Do I get these ones? Yeah. Thank you very much for mine. How are you guys? Thank you for being such a big help. You guys are such big helpers. Thank you, thank you. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. You're all doing good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. So I want to ask you, what does it mean to tell the truth? Does anyone know what it means to tell the truth? I'm going to come around. I'm going to go down the aisle. Did you raise your hand? What do you think? Being honest. Yes, when we're telling the truth, we're being honest. Yes, what were you going to say? We always need to tell the truth. Yes, I like that too. What were you going to Don't lie. Yep, when we're being honest, we're not lying. When we're telling the truth, we're not lying. Anything else you want to add? All of those are great things. You're right. When we're, hi, yep, hi. When we are telling the truth, we're being honest, we're not lying. And there's someone that we know that always tells the truth. Do you guys know who that person is? God and Jesus, that's right. God and Jesus always tell the truth. Now, we're supposed to follow Jesus, so what does that mean for us? It means always to live like God, that's right. And how can we tell the truth like Jesus? Yes. When we tell them about God, we're telling the truth of Jesus, that's exactly right. What other ways, do when, how else can we tell the truth like Jesus? We can always love him. That's right. And we can pray and talk to him. In our scripture today, Jesus and Pilate are having a hard conversation. And I know sometimes we have to have hard conversations too. Have you guys, when you're in school, have you ever seen someone be mean to somebody else? Yes, yes you have. Sometimes. This Sometimes, yes. This does happen. But when we're being honest like Jesus, Jesus is telling us to have those hard conversations and say, hey, that's not nice. We need to be nice to our friends. That's hard to do, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But who's there to help us with it? God. Jesus, that's right. And just as Jesus calls us to tell the truth and to be honest and to follow him, he's there to help us when we have to have those hard conversations with people about, hey, you need to be nice to others. He's there to help each and every one of you. So this week, I know we're going to school for just a couple days. Some of you guys aren't going to school, just two, you're right. Some of you guys aren't going to school at all this week, but that's okay. Um, I want you guys to try and live like Jesus in those honest moments. And if you see someone that's not being nice to somebody, can you guys have that hard conversation with them and tell them, yeah, oh man, yeah, I heard some yes. 
Because when someone's having a hard time, you help them. That's exactly right. Do you think this, con this congregation out here can have some of those hard conversations and be honest like Jesus too? And those people that are watching online too? Yeah, I think it's so excited about you online people. I'm so happy about it. So let's go ahead and turn to God in prayer now and thank him for Jesus and how he can help us to be honest too. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me and congregation repeat after me too. Dear God, thank you so much for your son Jesus who teaches us how to be honest. Help us to follow him and to always be honest and to have those hard conversations with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we will head down the hall, parents, now to Children's Church, and you all will pick up down the hall. Thank you, Miss Lori, for that awesome message. Today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate went back to his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews, he asked? Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. So you are a king. You say I'm a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. This is the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Come Holy Spirit, and as you were present in that conversation so long ago with Jesus and Pilate, be present with us today. Be present in my words. Be present in our heads and our hearts as we seek to hear and to understand. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, use this time to reshape us so that we look more like you. Amen. So since early October, we've been moving through this worship series called Live Like Jesus. We began with understanding that living like Jesus is a journey. It's not something that happens in one day. It's, a, it's something that we're always growing in. We've talked about how living like Jesus includes being humble, uh, spending time present with God, practicing uh, generosity, having saints, and last week, we talked about living hopefully. And as I said at the beginning of the series, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list. There are lots of other ways that we can live like Jesus, right? But these are all qualities that do help us to live like Jesus. So we conclude the series today on Reign of Christ Sunday in the Christian year, the last Sunday of the Christian year, when we culminate the year by reflecting on what it means for Jesus to be a king and what it means for us to be subjects in the kingdom of Jesus. And simply saying those words, we are subjects in the kingdom of Jesus, helps us realize how strange that sounds to our ears here in the United States. It's a difficult concept for many of us to grasp, especially if we've lived here all of our lives, because in our civic lives, we haven't been subjects of a ruler. We, we don't know what that is like 
in our daily life. We're citizens in a republic, and yet in our spiritual lives, we are children of the king. The tension between Christian civic identity and our spiritual identity has played out in many different contexts across the years, but its origins can be traced at least in part to this conversation that Jesus and Pilate have. Jesus, a spiritual leader, Pilate, a civic leader. And that conversation is all about what is truth. What is the truth that is at the core of who we are? And how does that truth relate to the truth of Christ? And this seems like an important conversation for us to be having in these days when we hear a lot of debate about what is truth and what is true. What isn't true? Who do I trust for truth? Is science to be trusted? The media? The preacher? And, and let me say that I'm, I'm in no way trying to make a political statement here. I'm reading our text from the Bible today, and I'm paying attention to what's going on in our world, and I'm hearing a dialogue. People are really struggling today to know what's true, to know what they can trust. Does their understanding of truth exist in a framework that's trustworthy? Well, Pilate finds himself in a similar situation in our text today. Pilate is the Roman governor of Jerusalem, so he holds the political power in the Roman-ruled city of Jerusalem. And he's been told in verse 30 of John 18 that Jesus is a criminal. And that version of the truth has come to him from the high priest's mouth. And Pilate asks the high priest, what, what charge do you bring against Jesus? And the first answer that the religious authority kind of gives, in essence, is, well, well, we wouldn't give him to you if he wasn't a criminal. Don't you trust us? The crime that Jesus supposedly has committed is treason. The religious authorities say he has claimed to be a king. And that means he's undermining the Roman government, and that makes him a traitor. But then Pilate gets in front of Jesus, and, and he tries to talk to him about this being a king. He tries to get him to confess to his treason, and, and Pilate has this man standing in front of him who doesn't look anything like what Pilate thinks of as a king. His feet are dusty and dirty. He's dressed in peasant clothes, and he looks like he would be a hardworking carpenter or a fisherman. He's not putting on airs with his appearance like someone who thinks that they are a king. So Pilate asks him, are you a king? And this is where the truth that Pilate has heard from the religious authorities starts to break down. Jesus says, well, I know that's what others have told you, that I'm a king. What do you think? And Pilate replies, your religious authorities tell me that you've been claiming to be a king. They're angry enough about your claims that they've handed you over to me. What have you done? Can you feel Pilate maybe starting to get a little frustrated here? He's legitimately trying to get to the truth. He's legitimately trying to exercise his job. And in response, Jesus starts playing with the other word that I think is important in our scripture today, and that's king. What is a king? What is a kingdom? Pilate thinks of it in terms of his world, political rule, rule over other people, power exercised in a community. And Jesus says something very important. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. Now, I want to be careful here. So last week we were talking about hope. You remember we were talking about how to live hopefully last week. And um, one of the things that I said is that living hopefully doesn't mean that we only pay attention to the future. We only put our eggs in what's going to happen in the future baskets. We're not supposed to live detached from this world. The gospel story tells us that we have some hard work to do to figure out how we can be people of hope, how we can hope in what is coming and live in this world as subjects of King Jesus. The gospel story invites us to live in the tension of our civic identity, our worldly identity, and our identity as children of the King. 
As scholar David Luz writes, what Jesus is trying to say here is that if he and his followers were of this world, then naturally they would use the primary tool of this world that is used to establish and keep power. And that tool is violence. But Jesus is not of this world. And so Jesus is not going to defend himself using violence. He's not going to establish his claims by violence. He's not going to usher in God's kingdom by violence. Jesus will make no followers by violence. Rather, Jesus has come to witness to the truth. The truth that God is love. And that because we have not seen God and have such a hard time imagining God... All too often, our imaginations are dominated by our lived experience. Now, that's a powerful word for us as we think about what it means for Jesus to be our king on Reign of Christ Sunday. Our imaginations of what things can be are too often limited by our experience. Let me offer one small example. So I grew up um, here in Virginia, and the beaches that I went to are the ones on uh, the right side of this screen, your left side, on the left side of your screen. Virginia, North Carolina beaches, Outer Banks, Emerald Isle, all those places, and that's what a beach looks like. That is, that is what I believed we would see when the ocean met the land. Then I went to Maine for the first time. And the first time I went to Maine, I was completely befuddled by the fact that the beaches are rocky and they have pine trees on them, and yet they're still the place where the Atlantic Ocean meets the eastern seaboard. And and so my imagination of what a beach was, the image that I called to mind when I thought of a beach, was challenged because of my lived experience. Well, we struggle with imagining Jesus as a king because our imaginations of kings have a hard time embracing who Jesus is. Our imaginations are limited to the kinds of kings we've experienced, just like Pilate's was. We know kings, like Pilate did, in a political way. Kings exert their rule in our experience, and they do that by amassing armies to keep their kingdom safe and to control insurrections. They often rule by demands of loyalty and fear and punishment. And that doesn't make sense when we look at Jesus, because Jesus rules through love, and compassion, and second chances, and forgiveness, and mercy. These qualities require us to adjust our heads and our hearts, just like Pilate was struggling with. What does it mean for us to give our primary allegiance to the way of Jesus that is still not of this world? Two centuries later, it means that we're called to do just what Miss Lori talked with the kids about. Sometimes we have to have those hard conversations because sometimes we are at odds with the way people around us act and think. We're called to demonstrate our strength as children of the king by laying down our lives, our resources, and our allegiances at the feet of the servant King Jesus. As we leave this season of gratitude and as we move into Advent next week, I want to invite you, as we start to anticipate the birth of Jesus, to really wrestle in your heart, as I wrestle in my heart, with whether I've given myself to Jesus. Are we fully obedient to him as King of kings and Lord of lords in our lives? If we still have allegiances, loyalties to other ties that that make us act or think or speak in a certain way, how do those loyalties stack up against Christ and the law of love that always breaks down the walls that divide us? May God lead us toward our true kingdom, The kingdom that already is and yet is still to come. A kingdom whose foundation is a savior who emptied himself so that the whole world 
could be filled with love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, in addition to the 140 Thanksgiving baskets that were given out to the community that I talked about last week, a team of, yeah, well, hold on, just wait, just wait. A team of 10 people went down to the J.O. Christian Outreach Center, or the JCOC, which is down by the convention center. Um, And um, every evening at the JCOC, dinner is served to about 70 homeless folks. Um, It was served by Haygood on Thursday for the first time. We're going to be doing it again um, next year. Um, Guests were fed meatloaf and green beans and roasted potatoes and uh, salads and dessert with cookies that were made by the members of our Thursday morning Bible study class. And then every guest got a goodie bag that had a card on it that our children's church folks had decorated, okay? So so that night, the gifts of so many people made sure people weren't hungry. Raise your hand if you either donated to those Thanksgiving bags that our food pantry did, or you did something with the JCOC um, in the last week. So, and, and look around at, at all those, you know, I mean, what an amazing thing. What an amazing way that our gifts made a difference this season. As the band sings our response, you are invited to prepare for our time of prayer in two different ways. Actually, three. You can go tie a knot on that prayer quilt for Chris, a 15-year-old with bone cancer. Also, at the back of the room, there are some instructions about prayer beads. If you'd like to think about using prayer beads in your own prayer life, there's some samples for sale and some booklets about them if you have a bead collection at home. We've also got our community prayer board over here. You can write down a prayer on a post-it note and stick it there, and I'll pray for it during the prayers of the people. And we also invite you to take one home with you when you leave so that you can lift up somebody else in prayer this week. Let's sing to the King of Kings. We were waiting without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dark Pray. Praise the 
Before we go to God in prayer, a couple of congregational concerns to, to let you know about. Um, Frank Bender um, had another surgical procedure this week as he moves toward a better treatment for his Parkinson's, and that went well. Um, Miss Lori's dad, Robert, is in the hospital. Um, just um, went in on Friday morning and hopes he'll go home Monday or Tuesday. They're just trying to figure out his potassium levels. Um, and Keith Best's sister and Dale's daughter, Nancy, had a mild stroke on Friday. So we want to lift them up in prayer. Let's turn to God. Almighty God, from the beginning of time to the end of eternity, you have chosen to use your power and majesty to love us, to redeem us, to shape us as your people. King of kings and Lord of lords, you became weak so you could confront the strength of sin and death and reduce them to nothing with your resurrection life. Spirit of God resting upon us, May your power inflame us with your peace. May your peace touch us with your grace. And may your grace fill us with your hope. And may your hope lead us into your kingdom. Holy God, creator, Christ, and redeemer, even though you have conquered death, our world remains infected with despair and injustice. Make us the bearers of your truth, a truth that offers compassion, mercy, and peace to the least, the last, and the lost. We pray for every person fed this week by the gifts of our community, that they might know your hope. We pray for all who feel alone and lost, whether depressed or lonely or victims of systemic injustice, that you might lead us to befriend them. We lift before you now the, the people and the places that are near to our hearts that need the healing balm of your love. We lift to you the homeless community of Virginia Beach, we lift to you Rebecca as she has knee surgery. We lift to you Curtis's mother battling lung cancer. We pray for all of those who are traveling over the holidays. We pray for Elizabeth who's having a tough pregnancy the Peluso family, whose 53-year-old mom died last week. We pray for those who are standing by siblings in hospice care and a friend whose son was recently incarcerated. We pray for the Lockwood family as they continue to grieve. We pray for Robert, and Nancy, and Frank as they continue to seek healing. And God, we offer a prayer of thanks for this faith community, for the way that you allow us, that you equip us to be a beacon of love to one another into our community. We thank you for all of the ways that our lives intersect. We thank you for new folks who are coming to seek you, and for the folks who've been around for generations. And we ask that you continue to help us share the good news that the Spirit is at work in this place. God in community, holy three in one, may your word be on our lips as we pray together as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. As you move out into the world this week, remember that we are children of that King, the life-changing King, and share His love and His truth with everyone that you meet. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you know that blessing, and may that blessing live through you this day and always. And all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>